Hello dear students, good morning. Today I want to explain FCFS scheduling algorithm. FCFS CP scheduling algorithm. What is the full form of FCFS? First come, first serve. Okay. It is a very simplest algorithm that schedules according to arrival times of processes. Arrival times means when the process is coming into the ready queue. Based on the arrival time, the processes are scheduling for the CPU. Okay, whichever is comes first, that process will get the CPU first. Right, first come first serve scheduling algorithm states that the process that requests the CPU first is allocated the CPU first. Whichever is process requesting CPU first will be allocated CPU first. It is implemented with the help of a FIFO queue. Okay, when a process enters the ready queue, its process control block is linked on the tail of the queue. That means first process and whichever the process is coming, the next next process will be executed. Right? Next, here FCFS is a non-preemptive scheduling algorithm. We have already seen non-preemptive, preemptive, right? Preemptive CPU scheduling and non-preemptive CPU scheduling. Preemptive means we can remove the CPU. CPU will be removed from the current executing process and CPU will be allocated to the another waiting process. This is called as preemptive. Preemption means removing of CPU. Even though this process is still executing, we are removing CPU from this and we are allocating CPU to the next process. But here non-preemptive scheduling algorithm, we cannot remi remove CPU from the currently executing process. If P1 is executing by CPU, CPU will be available only when P1 is completed its execution. P1 complete ga execute in the we can remove CPU from P1. Otherwise, we cannot remove CPU from P1. This is called as non-preemptive. Non-preemptive means we cannot preempt the CPU. Preemptive means we can preempt the CPU. Uh, FCFS is which type of algorithm? It is a non-preemptive. That means CPU okasari allocate chase in tarvata. We cannot remove CPU until the process completes and or release the CPU. Here there is a problem with the FCFS scheduling algorithm. FCFS first come first serve suffers from convoy effect. What is the meaning of convoy effect? Convoy effect means suppose process P1 came in the ready queue first. P2 came next, P3 came like this. This is the order of coming into the ready queue. Now, if suppose process P1 is having highest burst time, that means suppose it is having, it needs 1000 milliseconds of time, 1000 milliseconds of CPU time and P2, requi uh, P2 requires only 5 milliseconds, P3 requires only 10 milliseconds of CPU, CPU time. Now, P2 and P3 should wait up to 1000 milliseconds of time, yes or no? Because it is a non-preemptive. We cannot preempt CPU from this process P1. Process P1 came first. That's why we have allocated CPU first. It is non-preemptive. Process P1 will execute up to 1000 milliseconds, right? Here P2 and P3 are waiting up to 1000 milliseconds. Like it is a, like a convoy, right? Convoy means the first vehicle moves, then only the next vehicles which are waiting can move. Otherwise, they should wait. This is a convoy effect. Try to remember this word. Now, I will explain an example for this. See, first come, first serve. Before going to solve the problem, you have to know what is arrival time. Arrival time means time at which process arrives in the ready queue. At what time? process arrives in the, this is a ready queue, at what time it came into ready queue. 
what is a completion time time at which process completes its execution at what time it is finished its execution what is burst time the cpu time required by a process or per cpu execution how much time it is required what is a turnaround time if you subtract arrival time from the completion time you will get turnaround time what is waiting time if you subtract burst time from the turnaround time you will get the waiting time how to remember these uh, formulas to solve the numerical from this fcfs now see i am giving an example here there is a burst time given arrival time given right for the cpu scheduling algorithms is uh, numericals we have to write a use a gan chart right with the help of gan chart only we can easily find the average waiting time and average turnaround time of a every process here see how to draw a gan chart first we have to check arrival time here arrival time is mentioned what is the meaning of arrival time the time at which the process came into ready queue process p1 came ready queue at the time of zero right fcfs is what first come first serve how can we know which process came first based on the arrival time only we came to know which process came first into the ready queue right at the time of zero the process p1 came that means the process p1 came first in the ready queue that's why we have to allocate cpu first to the process p1 always our cpu execution will start from 0 milliseconds here process p1 it came at 0 0 we have to write 0 here because p1 started its execution at the time of 0 p p1 when the p1 will complete its execution 0 plus 27 because p1 required 27 milliseconds 0 plus 27 is 27 next next which process came after p1 p2 came that's why you have to write p2 here and what is the burst time of p2 12 milliseconds what you have to do p2 takes 12 milliseconds you have to add the, currently the cpu time the time in the cpu is 27 from 27 it will execute up to 12 milliseconds that means 27 plus 12 how much 27 plus 12 is 39 that means p2 started at 27 and complete completed its execution at 39 milliseconds manam ikkada p2 eppudu complete ayindi 39 milliseconds p2 when it is started 27 milliseconds next after p2 which process came into ready queue p3 came what is the burst time of p3 that means cpu time 37 milliseconds now the current time in cpu is 39 up to what time it will finish 39 plus 37 39 plus 37 how much 66 39 to 66 p3 will completed its execution after p3 which process came p4 here you have to check this 0 1 2 3 after p3 p4 came what is the burst time of p4 19 current time is 9 66 you have to add 19 to 66 how much this is 85 up to 85 milliseconds p4 is completed its execution next process is p5 39 plus uh, 39 plus 37 how much this is 75 not this is 39 plus wait 39 addition we have did some wrong here 39 plus 37 is 75 next to p4 how much 75 plus 19 <laughs> it is 94 p4 19 p3 39 plus 
yes this is 96 wait, wait. it is 76 39 plus 37 76 plus p4 76 plus 19 95 now p5 what is the remain uh, the burst time of p5 95 plus 10 105 i hope you understand up to this just to have to add you have to add the remaining burst time uh, burst time of each process to the last completion time now how to find the average waiting time and average turnaround time See, completion time. Here, process P1 started at 0 milliseconds and it is completed its execution at 27. That means, completion time of P1 is 27. Completion time of P2 is how much? It is, P2 started at 27 and it is completed at 39 milliseconds. Completion time of P2 is 39. And P3 started at 39 and completed at 76 milliseconds in the CPU. P4 completion time is 95. Next, P5 completion time is 105. Now, what is turnaround time? Completion time minus arrival time. Completion time of P1 is 27 and arrival time is 0. 27 minus 0 is 27. And uh, P2, completion time of P2 is 39 and arrival time is 1. 39 minus 1, 38. Completion time of P3 is 76 and arri arrival time is 2. 76 minus 2, 74. And uh, completion time of uh, P4, 95 minus 3, 92. One at P5, 105 minus 4, 101. Next, what is the waiting time? Turnaround time minus burst time. Now, P1 waiting time, 27. And burst time of P1 is 27. 27 minus 27, 0. And P2 waiting time, 38 minus 12. Uh, 28 and 26 next P3 waiting time 74 minus 37 37 next P4 waiting time 92 minus 19 82 92 minus 19 how much 12 minus 9 3 and here 8 minus 73 <coughs> And P3 waiting time is 101 minus 10. 1, 101 minus 10 is 91. See now how to find the average turnaround time. Just add all the all the turnaround times of each process. You have to come addition of all this. 27 plus 38 plus 74 plus 92 plus 101 divided by 5 because total number of processes are 5 and here what is the average waiting time how to find the average waiting time waiting time add all the waiting times and uh, divide it by 5 that is what 0 average waiting time is this is average turnaround time 0 plus 26 plus 37 plus 73 plus 91 divided by 5 this is how you can calculate the average waiting time and average turnaround time in the fcfs mainly if you have to you have to focus in the arrival times if the arrival time is not given in the question sometimes they will mention like the processes come in the order of p1 p2 p3 p4 p5 that means they are telling first p1 came next p2 came after P2, P3 came, next to P4, P5. Like this, you have to take. Try to remember the GAN chart. First, it will start at time 0. And after that, whenever it is completed, you have to add the next boss time to this. I hope you understand this. Try to uh, do on your own. Thank you very much.